Hello, everybody, and welcome to another session of Ask the Expert. Today, developing the Jewish resources on my heritage. My name is Daniel Horowitz. I'm the genealogy expert at my heritage, and I, besides uh, contacting genealogy societies, I give lectures and webinars around the world dedicated to genealogy since 1986, and now in Israel, digitization, uh, involved in digitization and transcription projects, uh, volunteering for the Israel Genealogy Research Association as well. And today, I am very excited because today is as the experts in plural, because I decided to bring a very special guest, my dear friend, Ellen Cowett. She is a veteran Jewish record researcher and leader in genealogy activities worldwide. I actually have uh, uh, met her many times in many genealogy conferences where she and I, we were lecturing, and, and she is a wonderful lecturer, I have to tell you that. Uh, her lectures are energetic, are always informative, and most of the times go beyond the time because she wants to give all the information that she can. She also volunteers in the genealogy world for 25 years, so veteran indeed, and she helps numerous leadership roles, organize records, acquisition, index, manage translations and projects in the United States and the whole world. So it's really, again, a pleasure for me to leave you in her very good hands. Hello, Ellen, how are you? Hello, Daniel. Thank you for having me and welcome everyone to uh, an, a lecture on Jewish resources on my heritage. Let's get started. We're going to explore the unique tools and record collections relevant to researching Jewish ancestry found on my heritage. Uh, just, for the I'm sorry. I just forgot to mention everybody that you can uh, type your comments and questions in the question panel and I will take care of that while you are lecturing. Go ahead. Great, terrific. Thank you, Daniel. So for the purpose of this lecture, let's define Jewish resources in a few ways. Um, some records have the word Jewish in the title, such as the collection Jewish Holocaust Memorials and Jewish Residents of Germany, 1939 to 45. Some records, however, you need to search um, with a keyword rather than in the title of the collection field. And an example where you would find predominantly Jewish people would be the collection on my heritage for the mandatory Palestine naturalization applications, 1937 to 47. There are yet other titles that may not include the word Jewish in either the title or as a keyword. Um, actually, I reversed that. So German minority census will have Jewish as a keyword, but mandatory Palestine naturalization applications won't. There are other features unique to searching for Jewish records, such as a Holocaust cause of death search field, which we'll show you in a few minutes. And then I'm gonna add a fifth category here. My heritage, as you know, is based in Israel, and there are Israel-specific records that can be found on my heritage also. So the majority of Jewish and Israeli records come from partnerships that my heritage has created over the years with the Israel Genealogy Research Association, also called IGRA, the Israeli State Archives, and Billion Graves. So let's talk about Billion Graves for just a quick moment. Um, a few years back, Billion Graves and my heritage in partnership uh, digitized almost every cemetery in Israel. And these are available on both websites at this point. So although this collection is already is, is also available on Billion Graves and also on IGRA, if you search in English on my heritage, you can view the image and gravestone inscription in multiple languages. 
You should know that in Israel, some gravestones are in Russian. Billion Graves and Igra would not be able to show you a translation for those gravestones, whereas MyHeritage can. You should know that on Igra's paid database, there is an index in Hebrew and English, but they don't show the images like MyHeritage does. And in order to search databases on IGRA, you have to be current with paying annual membership dues. So on MyHeritage, across the top in the tab section, you can search, you can use the drop-down menus and find something called the collections catalog. And if you search in the collections catalog, we find 15 Jewish record collections of significant interest. So the first one I want to mention is this very newly acquired Greece Corfu Vital Records Collection. It does not have Jewish in the title. It does not have Jewish in the keyword search. However, when you read the description of this file, and I was directed to this um, in a recent webinar that um, the head of my heritage, Gilad, um, mentioned in his uh, recent webinar for IGRA, that there were ethnic records including Jews. And in the description, it says that there are ethnic records. It does not say specifically that there are Jews, but we now know from Gilad that there are. So check out the Greece Corfu vital records if that's an area of interest and you have Jewish families there. The um, other significant record set is the IGRA's birth, marriage, and death um, index. And on MyHeritage, it's available for free. So if you're not a member of IGRA and you want access to that collection on MyHeritage, this will always be free. You don't even have to pay a subscription on MyHeritage to access it. Um, and not in any other particular order, but there are other um, lists here of Jewish records of interest, the mandatory Palestine naturalization applications, if we flip back to the press release when it was first um, released back in 2017, was actually called the British Mandatory Citizen Requests, but that's the same list. Of course, we have all of these great Israeli burials. Um, there are obituaries, Israeli obituaries. There's access to the Israeli telephone directory from 1944. And then in Eastern Europe, there are a variety of lists in Germany, the internal passports for Lithuania and Latvia, which include Jews. There's a list of partisans from Belarus, some Polish and Slovakian records. And in the United States, there are several collections from uh, Jewish colleges and Jewish um, high school yearbook collections. So let's talk about record matching for just a moment. So record matching is a technology that is provided on MyHeritage with a paid subscription and a family tree on MyHeritage. And through record matching, there are additional Jewish materials that are available in the form of automated record hints. So those of you who have MyHeritage subscriptions would be familiar with seeing these. And there are three different um, distinctly Jewish types of materials that I'd like to point out that aren't in the collections catalog, but do appear as record matches. So there are a number of Jewish digital books that appear, and these include things like the Jewish Encyclopedia, the American Jewish Yearbook, the Jewish Communal Register of New York City, and B'nai B'rith's National Jewish Monthly. There's also um, a list of Jewish newspaper titles that appear, and I have a slide where we'll share what those 15 titles are. But the most exciting one, I think, and that a lot of people aren't aware of, is that MyHeritage also picks up the free text documents that come out of the Arrelson archives. Um, there are other um, ways to view the Arrelson archives material, uh, if you read the press releases directly coming out of Ar about Arlson, Germany, where the Arlson archives are um, located, you'll see that they're adding constantly to their digitized collection online. Um, they have a lot that's still offline, but uh, things have really advanced with Arlson in recent years, and they're making that material uh, more available to people who are accessing on the internet. And it's in English. So the Jewish newspaper collections 
seem to be predominantly from the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. And these are the titles that came up when I searched simply for Jewish in the title. So we have the Jewish Chronicle, the Canadian Jewish Chronicle. Uh, there are regional Jewish newspapers like the Heritage Florida Jewish News. I think the Jewish Daily Eagle was out of Brooklyn. Uh, the Jewish Voice of Hamilton, Canada, the Jewish Guardian. So this is a great way to do some researching on the Jewish newspaper collections. And we're gonna move into that Holocaust cause of death search feature that I mentioned earlier. So when you edit an ancestor's individual profile, um, this is assuming you have a family tree on my heritage, you can choose Holocaust as the cause of death. Uh, you'll be prompted to enter whatever you know, whatever information you know, and you can see in the, um, the person's thumbnail view over here in your tree that there will be a yellow star that's added as um, indicating that there was a Holocaust cause of death down here um, that you have attributed to this individual. There are also additional causes of death that you can attribute to a profile other than Holocaust, and these include things like dying in an accident, at war, at a young age, from cancer, diabetes, heart attack, homicide, illness, medical problems, miscarriage, and others. One of my heritage's strongest assets, and that really sets them aside from their competition, is that they have a global name translation technology. This automatically translates names from 42 languages, including many languages that we see in Jewish families, including Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, Czechoslovakian, German, Hebrew, and Yiddish. What it does is that it allows you to search in one language and, result, and receive results in another language. I can't emphasize how valuable this is, we're all familiar with Soundex and phonetic searching. There's Deutsch Makatov. There are fuzzy and fuzzier and fuzzier searches. Um, but being able to translate between languages, um, as this example here shows, there are many ways to say and spell Alex. The sound of the name is not only transliterated differently, but there is a different application of names in different languages. So being able to throw into a search the name Alex and come back with you know 50 examples of a name in a different language found in a different document is such a valuable attribute. Let's talk about autosomal DNA testing. My Heritage is not the only DNA testing company out there that has um, an ethnic category for Jewish, but it does have the most categories at this time. And those five major Jewish categories include Ashkenazi. Ethiopian, Yemenite, Sephardic from North Africa, and Mizrahi from Iran and Iraq. In a conversation I had with Daniel at one point, um, we were talking about how there are some other results that may end up also being Sephardic, and those would include Italian or Greek or Bulgarian, Turkish or North African. So we have some exciting announcements. There are more Jewish genealogy resources coming very soon. Uh, some of these collections will be released in two phases, but um, I understand that everything listed here is coming at least in phase one by the end of 2020. And an Israel immigrant database containing over 1.5 million people will be added. That's very exciting. There will be a Vienna Jewish community emigration request list circa 1938 to 1940. And additional genetic group enhancements across the entire DNA um, collection at MyHeritage will be expanding, but specifically in the Jewish arena, some of those enhancements will include Jewish DNA for Baghdadi Jews, for Caucasus Jews in Azerbaijan, and um, some type of Ashkenazi clusters, I understand they're not as uh, developed as some of these more specific places like Baghdad and the Caucasus, but that's very exciting. And um, I can't wait to see where my DNA expands, especially my Sephardic from North Africa. So quickly in summary, 
MyHeritage.com has partnerships, um, including Jewish resources and records with the Israel State Archives, with the Israel Genealogical Research Association, IGRA, and with Billion Graves currently. MyHeritage has uh, digitized almost all of Israel cemeteries in partnership with Billion Graves. There is the record matching technology, which provides access to additional Jewish resources with the Arelson archives and with other free text sources, providing access to Jewish newspapers and books. MyHeritage provides a cause of death search option, including Holocaust. MyHeritage.com has global name transla translation technology that automatically translates names from 42 languages. MyHeritage offers autosomal DNA with five major Jewish ethnicity categories that be can be linked to family trees and more coming. And I'll mention that there's also a Hebrew language blog in addition to the English language blog that each of you can access. They also have Facebook pages in Hebrew as well as English. And what you should know if you're multilingual is that you can follow each of these blogs um, and Facebook in different languages because there are different posts. So there may be different information posted in each of the languages. So keep your eyes open for the exciting new Jewish genealogy resources coming to MyHeritage in 2020. And we're gonna open this up to questions, Daniel. That will be great. So I already have a few questions here and I started to answer them, uh, but I want to share them with you as well. Uh, before that, I just want to go with a few very important announcements for everybody. And I'm adding uh, some URLs in the chat uh, because uh, today is actually the last day that MyHeritage has free access to all billion records, uh, not billion graves, but billion, a little bit more than a billion records, uh, birth records from all over the world. So that is your opportunity to see those records for free. Um, then uh, the legacy page, Family Tree webinars will offer you webinars live or recorded uh, from my heritage and others. And I encourage you to visit and take advantage of that as well as the other, as the experts. And wow, time flies. Uh, I really need to start working on August, uh, but for now we have uh, two more in the month of July and we will have some uh, surprise people um, invited for those two. So you're more than welcome to visit the URL, uh, the bit.ly URL that I created uh, so you can register and see what we are going to have. And I'm going to update August over there very fast. And the knowledge base, the education.myheritage.com, where you can find recordings of previews as the experts, other webinars, articles, and downloadable resources as well. Um, okay, let's go then for the questions and uh, a few ones I had here selected. Um, Ellen, I would like to hear your suggestions as somebody is asking uh, for repositories for Aleppo, Beirut, uh, Egypt, Syria. Do you have any suggestions? I don't, Daniel. That's not really my greatest expertise area. Um, I think, you know, throwing it back into the realm of Israeli resources. Uh, you should certainly check out the uh, uh, Central Archives for the History of the Jewish People, which is located at Hebrew University. Part of their catalog is available through the National Library of Israel. Um, when I have looked into families in that part of the world, sometimes there are things that come up in the National Library catalog. Uh, I don't know if the Israeli Archives is particularly strong on the Jewish um, migrations from those area, but that's a possibility too. Do you have any other thoughts okay. on that? Uh, yes, I actually totally different. I suggested besides IGRA because uh, it's not only taking uh, care of Israel, but also 
uh, a few other databases available in Israel from those countries. Uh, there is another website that I suggested over there in the answer or the question panels uh, for uh, Egypt uh, genealogy. Um, Peter wants to search for a naturalization record pre-1947. Um, well, Peter, the uh, naturalizations in my heritage starts in 1937. So between 1937 and 47, you will find them there. Otherwise, the Israel State Archive uh, will also may give you more records on that. Um, I see some people are having problems with audio. Um, and uh, is the Israel Immigrant Database in English? Uh, Irene is asking. I think, Ellen, you were uh, referring to Gilad's uh, lecture, right? For yes. the Immigrants Database. So um, I actually put all, also in the chat the address of the blog in my heritage, the English blog that has the recording of that lecture. Uh, so you can all go there and see it. And uh, no, Irene is in Hebrew, as all the uh, databases, most of the databases uh, actually generated in Israel. But uh, not to worry, because you can use the global name translation or uh, to answer Sonny, uh, the global name translation is going to be used, either you want it or not, uh, to find your records in Hebrew, although you will search in English. And uh, Sonny wanted to know that for billion graves. Uh, so yes, it doesn't matter if you use English, Hebrew, Russian, uh, all the languages are going to be taken in consideration and uh, you're gonna get records no matter in what language. Uh, where can I go to find the birth record for German, Polish, Jewish family before 1870s, Ellen? A German, Polish family in the 1870s. Well, um, it really depends on uh, the location of the town. If you're talking about the Austrian, um, Hungarian, Habsburg Empire, those records... Um, are in a different place than if you're talking about what we would define as Congress Poland. So I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. That could be a whole lecture. Um, but I, you can use the resources on Jewish Gen and put in um, the town finder, the community founder, uh, finder database, the name of the town to determine in the period where your family lived there, um, what country was in charge of that town. Okay, and, and you have no idea, well, you can see it yourself, the amount of questions that we're having today. Uh, what about Bukhara component of Mizrahi for the DNA is asking Marshall. And Marshall, I can tell you uh, that we are going to have many, many more um, ethnicities, or it will not be ethnicities anymore, it will be regions, and you can hear what Gilad says um, in a shocking, uh, revealing uh, the uh, upcoming uh, ethnicities or reports for uh, other uh, groups, not only Jews, but non-Jews. And yes, Bukhara and Egyptians and uh, a lot are going to be uh, released. Uh, what records can be searched in the Pale of Settlement? <laughs> okay. Um, that would be a great experts um, topic in the future, Daniel. Um, what is the Pale of Settlement? How do you define that? What are the countries today? Unfortunately, that's not a quick answer like the German-Polish uh, vital record question. Um, but there are records in many of the areas of the former Pale of Settlement. And if you're not familiar with Jewish Gen, it's a good place to go and sort of narrow down where in the palace settlement your family came from. You see, and that is something that I have no idea what is the Pale of Settlement. So maybe we should organize a lecture around that. Uh, yeah. Caroline found the family tree on my heritage in Hebrew. Uh, 
Um, and yes, we will not translate it for you, Caroline. So unfortunately, the only translation is done behind the scenes on the search engine or the record matches. Uh, you will need to ask for somebody to help you translate it. I have to admit, I will say Google Translate, but I haven't seen Google Translate working with a family tree on my heritage. That is something that I actually uh, will need to check. Uh, does my heritage have any resources for Jewish research in Romania and Ukraine? Louis, um, just a little bit. There are not too many over there. Unfortunately, and I know exactly uh, which area are you interested on. It is my area as well. And unfortunately, not Romania or Ukraine are very nice uh, sharing. Um, I will have to point you to the same source I use, which is Family Search, and just hoping that the new contract that Family Search signed uh, a few months ago will start bringing records from that area. Uh, can you type the website for the free birth certificate records? Uh, Vivian is asking. Vivian, very easy. Just go to myheritage.com slash birth uh, minus records, and that should put you right in the category. Um, are there any resources for Jewish entering Uruguay in the 30th? Montevideo is asking Judith. Uh, do you know any, Ellen? I do not. Okay. Uh, neither do I. I know Argentina, uh, but I'm not familiar with Uruguay. Uh, Judith, just try to contact the Jewish community over there uh, and see what they can give you. Hopefully, they will be able to point you to a good source. Um, mm -mm. Looking for any for Ukraine from the 1700s. Uh, good luck, Caroline. Uh, I don't think that besides Family Search, you will find it anyplace else. Ellen, do you have any suggestions? Um, there are rare examples that come out of Ukraine. I would direct you to keep an eye on um, Alex Krakowski's Ukrainian wiki page, where he has um, provided free access to records that have been digitized uh, most do not predate i think the majority do not predate 1800 um, but every now and then there could be a vital record set that might uh, so it's worth taking a look and karen is expanding her question and horizons now she wants brazil uh, i do know that the jewish brazilian community have a very good database and a very good uh, history center um, again it, tr just uh, go uh, and try to contact the community over there um, the people that i normally contact them uh, they know English very good, but I speak with them in Spanish. Um, let's see. Uh, can you please spell Alex Krakowski and the URL, please? It's I Lori. will do that right now. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, and Irene, uh, I am typing now. Uh, the URL of the search engine, and you will be able to search over there billion graves in any language. If you know how to type the names in Hebrew, you can do that without any information, without any problem. Uh, boy, we have some questions here, and also very good, and I appreciate from all my friends, and I recognize you by the names, uh, people are actually answering other questions here and I'm giving other people um, suggestions and we are already uh, biding the 30 minutes time. Uh, so let me choose uh, one more. Um, ben is uh, searching for family who lived in Galicia in the 1900s. He's using uh, Jewish Genageri Poland. Uh, other databases that you can uh, recommend. It's good that this is a MyHeritage uh, 
um, session, but go ahead. <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> quickly. Uh, I gave just gave a Ukraine lecture for IGRA, and um, I know that at the IAJGS conference coming up, the virtual conference next month, there's a presenter on the Ukrainian archives. But if you aren't don't have access to those two webinars, the Ukrainian state archives are online. The primary page, which is a landing page, is in English. And you can get to many of the regional archi state archives in Ukraine um, where they've provided English pages. It varies greatly what they're providing on each of those uh, regional state archive web pages. Um, but if your town ends up on the Ukrainian side of Galicia, it's definitely worth a look. I believe you'd be looking probably um, in Lviv, um, but maybe elsewhere if you're further south. So take a look at that. Um, also know that JRI Poland doesn't have everything online from the Polish state archives. And similarly, you can search a lot of documents that have been digitized on the Polish state archive websites. So you don't need to wait for JRI Poland or Ukraine SIG to index those records. At this point, you can go directly to the source to see if there are records for your town in each of those countries. Okay, and I'm just uh, typing here the uh, URL of Alex Krakowski. At least this is the URL that I found. Um, and I am very sorry uh, to need to leave you all with your questions, but uh, just uh, my two cents and what you should be doing. Wonderful reminding, Alan, definitely uh, the IAJGS conference, uh, virtual conference, so there is no excuse not to be there. It's coming now in August. Uh, Jewish Gen Forums, uh, or Forum One, now that they have uh, merged all into one uh, email list, uh, it's wonderful uh, to exchange information and to ask other people for your uh, brick walls and uh, yeah eventually my heritage is going to have a lot of new records coming in uh, very soon so with this Ellen I will thank you very much for stopping by today in this as the expert session thank you and to all of you, as I always said, uh, first, take very good care of yourself and your families. Uh, take care, take advantage of this extra time that we have uh, to do a little bit more of genealogy and have a wonderful weekend. See you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.